Thinking about buying land in Arizona? Let me give you guys some thoughts before you do. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm and we're coming to you here on a beautiful fall day here in Arizona in 2021. So we've had a lot of questions as we've started building this farm on this six acres of land in regards to land in general in Arizona. And I think for most people wanting to do what we're doing here, I think having some information before you take that step is really critical. Our focus here on this farm is a lot of production in regards to fruit trees and also livestock. Well, we have a lot of fruit trees in the ground now, poultry, pigs, maybe some sheep and goats, and possibly a cow or two is kind of our focus. So more of a traditional homestead or farm is kind of where we're at. So if that's what's on your mind, we're gonna give you some ideas today to consider before you buy that land. These won't be in any particular order, but they're all gonna be important as you're considering Arizona. So the first thing anybody needs to consider would be water. Not only is a lot of Arizona desert, we don't have a lot of rainfall. Even in the non-desert areas, as you head further north into Arizona, you'll still get a few dozen inches, but we're still not lo looking at the same quantities of water that you would find in many states here in the country. So water's critical. It's critical for life. You don't have it yourself, and the plants and animals around you are gonna need it in order to survive as well. We're here in one of our orchards and we have to think of water whenever we're putting something into the ground or wherever we have animals. Not only do you need to look at what you're gonna be using water for, but you need to check the source because we don't get a lot of rainfall, particularly in the desert areas of Arizona. You need to determine how much water you're gonna need for what you're wanting to do and where you're gonna get it. Because our water is limited and our rainfall is limited, you may find that you won't be able to do catchment or at least enough catchment in order to take care of the needs of your animals and your plants. At the same time, there's certain parts of Arizona where you're not gonna be able to drill a well, not because it's not possible, but because it's not feasible. In fact, there's areas in Northern Arizona where you have to go down 1500 feet or more just to tap into a limited supply of water in an aquifer. So you need to make sure you take that into consideration. At the same time, we do have water restrictions in a lot of parts of the state. So even if you can drill a well, you need to find out what those restrictions are going to be. So here in the Whitman area, we're restricted on the amount of water we can pull out of the ground at any given time and how much water we can use for traditional irrigation. That's one of the reasons why you won't see us doing much here in regards to large pastures because we can't. We're not actually allowed to do it. So we have to work around that particular requirement. So as with any anywhere else, you need to consider the source of the water and make sure you're gonna have enough for what you're planning on doing. Another thing to consider as you're looking for land is access. Not all of the parcels, even if it appears so, if you're looking at Google Maps or something like that, not every parcel has very good access. Usually you'll have some type of road that gets there, but a lot of times they're dirt roads. In fact, we have about a half a mile of a dirt road that we need to pass. And one of the areas that we need to go over is actually a fairly decent sized wash that does wash out when we get our torrential monsoon rains. So access is critical. One of the things that's behind me here, we're at our property line, there's a 10 acre parcel that's immediately behind us here. Now we don't know the current owners, however we do know the prior owner, and he had to actually buy access into the land. So I don't know what he paid for it, he wasn't willing to tell me, but I know it was at least 20 or 30 grand in order for him to buy access into the property, um, buying that from another landowner. The reason being, the road, road that the official access is on isn't there yet and all it is right now is basically just a quad road so enough a road that's big enough for a quad to get up and down now eventually that will probably be a fairly main road that comes into this part of town but as it stands today it's not 
you'll find in a lot of areas of Arizona, you have large swaths of land that are being sold and there is technically access, but realistically there's none. Next would be terrain. So Arizona has mountains, deserts, we have land that is hard clay soil. We have some that is sandy, say down near Yuma. We have riparian area areas, especially down in Tucson and some of those places. So the terrain can vary greatly. And I don't know whether or not you can pick it up in the background, but we've got an area here where we have a very shallow wash that comes through this one acre parcel that we own. And in the background, you can see the mountains in anything in between. So even in area that looks like it's fairly flat, you could find that the terrain is very uneven, especially once you start working with things like washes. Anywhere where we have these desert areas, especially in and around the Phoenix area, there are a tremendous amount of washes that push and move water as it falls because we typically get our water in a handful of rainstorms that come down and put a lot of water down in a very, very short period of time. And because the ground is so compacted, it basically goes into washes and flushes basically right back out. So a lot of times you're gonna be dealing with washes even though you may not necessarily see them if you're looking at say Google Maps or something like that. So terrain, definitely something that you wanna keep in mind because that will make a big difference in what you're planning on doing with that property. You can't have a discussion about Arizona without talking about climate. Most people are pretty comfortable with what happens in and around Phoenix. It's very hot in the summertime, but a lot of folks don't know if you're not from Arizona, it's actually very cold in the wintertime, especially once you get outside of the major cities, especially Phoenix and Tucson, you really start to cool down quite a bit. In fact, we're about an hour from downtown Phoenix and we're about anywhere from five to 10 degrees cooler, both during the summer and during the winter so it's quite different from what most folks might consider. In fact, if you're in Phoenix, you guys can grow tropical trees where we can't. We get down to 20 degrees just outside of the city. At the same time, when you're looking at different parts of Arizona, you have Northern Arizona that can get very, very cold with plentiful snowfall during the winter times and during the summer times, very nice. You know, 75, 80 degree days, maybe 90. So you can have that. As you head down south, you really get a combination of both. You have a few mountainous areas down there as well, but you also have cooler temperatures even in the desert areas where we're 110, 115, they're 100, 105. And we have some areas, say down in and around Yuma, where it's very warm year round. So they get very, very hot and they stay very warm even during the winter time. A lot of variations in climate when you're dealing with Arizona and definitely something to keep in mind as you're looking for land. Another consideration when you're looking at land in Arizona is restrictions on that land. The first thing of course would be state and county restrictions. There's also city restrictions as far as what you can do with the land itself, but we also have some additional restrictions. And here in the Whitman area and particularly on the west side of Phoenix, we have Luke Air Force Base and we actually have restrictions on building. In fact, depending on where you're at around certain landing strips, you can't put anything that is a livable structure. We learned that the hard way with the first piece of property that we bought, and we still have restrictions that surround us. Now you can use that to your advantage. For us, we do, because we're butting up against a couple of restricted areas, so we're fine, but at the same time, that keeps folks from building around certain areas. So keep that in mind. Those restrictions are there, and a lot of times they're hidden, so you won't necessarily know. My understanding is they have to actually disclose that, but we were on a piece of property where it didn't happen, so it can actually not go your way. <laughs> So you do wanna make sure you look into any restrictions. One of the biggest things I think a lot of us are wanting to do when we get out from the cities and have our own property is we wanna limit the amount of restrictions we have on what we can do with that land. And the majority of the counties here in Arizona definitely have restrictions as far as what you can build, particularly with a livable structure. So you wanna make sure you're taking those restrictions into consideration before you make that land purchase. So obviously this is not an all-inclusive list, but we have a lot of folks that ask us 
questions about buying land here in Arizona. I think one of the things that's an advantage for us here is we have a lot of our subscribers who live all over the state. And what I really wanna encourage you to do is check out the comments down below. And I wanna encourage our viewers that are here in Arizona in different parts of the state, give everybody some ideas of some of the things that might be of a concern in all of those areas so that folks watching this video can get as much information as possible before they make that leap into owning a piece of land here in Arizona. So just wanna thank you guys for joining us today. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. One of the things we cover here is kinda of what you're seeing today, land, and more importantly, what we're doing with this raw piece of land here in the middle of the desert of Arizona. Would love it to have you as a subscriber. And share the content. If you know anybody that's into this kind of thing, it definitely helps us here when you share it. And lastly, our Amazon shop, I'll leave a link down in the description below. If you start with that link, it doesn't matter what you buy, you help to support us here. So just want to thank you for joining us today and remind you if we can farm on the edge of nowhere so can you and share the content if you know anybody that's into this kind of thing it definitely helps the channel <laughs> <laughs> share the channel